Miss Puppy? Come here. No, nope, no puppy today. I was at the junkyard. I got a tip from Dean that there was a couple of 1961 uh, Plymouth cars at the Wreckers. And so I went down with no particular goal except to see what was there. Uh, I did manage to find a couple of things, so we'll have a quick look. I left them outside. We're working inside today because it's pouring rain. Got a complete set of four uh, 1960-61 Plymouth uh, dog dish hubcaps. So I was happy about that. They're not great, but they're not terrible. And I wasn't looking for this, but there was a pretty fair 1961 Plymouth grill there. And I thought a fun exercise might be to try and straighten it up, you can see there's some damage there, but these, they, they're not making these anymore. And it's a very delicate grill. They're very hard to find in good shape. So when I found this one in decent shape, I thought we'd better grab it. So since it's uh, miserable out today and I've got this grill, I thought let's have a quick look at it and see if we can get it looking a little better. And uh, then we can uh, hang it on the wall <laughs> and wait for something to happen. All right, got her into the workshop here, and uh, have a quick look. You can see if we hold it at this angle, you know, the damage is this whole row here is pushed in, uh, but that's not too terrible. Uh, I'm going to take these side trim pieces off so they don't fall off. We've got a little bit of damage there, and. The emblem is missing, but that's okay. I have one of those. This is a homemade thing that somebody has put on here, so uh, I don't know if we'll bother leaving that on. I'll leave it on for now. It's not really important. So we've got a little damage here, and here's the main damage. So let's try pushing that out and uh, see if we can make this look a little better. As I say, I don't absolutely require it right now but I just couldn't leave it in the junkyard uh, they're just too hard to get I'll just slide these trims off of here there we go Dean found this guy here and this is pretty good for the old 51 Vicky so I'm pop that out over here too you can see in the background my uh, do-it-yourself 60 Impala kit there. Uh, that's the car pretty much gutted. So pretty happy about that. Obviously we'll be getting more into 60 Impala's place on Saturday's video. So I hope you guys will check in for that. And meanwhile, 61 Plymouth Grill Rehab. Trouble with anodized aluminum is that you cannot, you can't repair it perfectly without cracking the anodizing and leaving that white hazy look which of course you can strip the anodizing off and polish it but that would be more or less impossible here so anyhow let me grab the little bit of pliers and shit let's get them all facing the right way first these grills are very delicate i think i'm going to work my way down Trying to push that kink out slowly. Not trying to do any one all the way because of the buckle. There's also these uh, ribs in here, which are supposed to hold it. Be pushing that out. I remember the first time I ever saw a 61 Plymouth, well it was just a picture of a 61. Uh, I was, uh, used to go to the library just to look at pictures of cars because the school library only had so much so there was a 
pretty fair automobile section in the county library and I used to go there and they had a photocopy machine where you could make black and white photocopies for 10 cents. So I would go to the uh, to the automobile section in the library and, and take out the encyclopedia of whatever and then flip through to uh, usually flip to the 1950s cars and just stare at pictures and and uh, and occasionally make photocopies of cars that I thought were worth having a picture of for 10 cents. And uh, I remember flipping through some big encyclopedia of cars or whatever it was and I flipped the page and there was a big picture of a 61 Plymouth Fury Coupe uh, and I, I actually recoiled a little bit. I, uh, I was so shocked. No, I, I think I was probably 10, 12 years old. I was just, it was such an alarming looking car that I, I, re I recoiled just at the monstrousness of the 61 Plymouth. And then I was fascinated, you know, like kind of look back, look at it again, you know, and, uh, and I just thought, there's no way that's a real car. And then I read it and I was like, it's a Plymouth, like, you know, and we had a Plymouth. And I just thought that was just the most freakish car that, how did that ever get made? And uh, so anyway, uh, many, many years later, in about 1991, I saw uh, an actual 61 Plymouth uh, for real for the first time. And that's the, the car that I have now. Uh, the first one I ever saw, I bought, I left a note on it. It was just a dumpy, rusty old four-door Belvedere, but I just had to have it. I still think that they're one of the most frightening looking cars. I remember driving my 61, you know, I drove that car for many years, probably in the mid nineties, I was driving the car and I, uh, I pulled up to a 7-Eleven or something, uh, and there was a lady there with her with her kids, and they were young, four, three, four, five years old, whatever. And when I pulled in with the car, the kids had the same reaction I did when I was a kid. They they recoiled and, and they actually started crying. So uh, I remember kind of smirking that that was very much the reaction that I had to a 61 Plymouth. All right, so I'm going to play with this for a few more minutes and then we'll uh, clean it up and we'll have a look at it and uh, we'll uh, go from there. Maybe we'll walk it out and lean it up against the car or something, but it is just pouring today. Okay, got her mostly popped out, decided to clean one side of it. So you can see just how nicely that's coming back with very minimal effort. Uh, most of the rust, well, of course, the rust you see is the uh, the steel around the grill rusting. So it mostly just wipes right off. Some of it's a little more stubborn, but this is all behind the bumper anyway. So you really only see from here to there. So that's going well. I'm going to keep cleaning this up and then I think I'll push out, try and push out these big guys here. Boom, boom. There's four or five big ones there. Push those out a bit. And uh, this was pretty twisted up from somebody uh, stealing the emblem without taking the bolts off. So it kind of mangled it. That will be hidden, luckily. So overall, I think it's coming back quite nicely. So we'll check in in a second here. Hey, some of you guys asked about doing a proper road test and review of Dean's 1958 Edsel Ranger. So uh, I think we're gonna start shooting that this week. Uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to it like I am. This car is surprisingly good to drive. And of course there will be lots more Biscala Splice coming up this weekend. Okay, this is where she goes. That's uh, I think a substantial improvement. Funny thing is, this one, which was really badly mangled when I got the car, I actually I spent a few minutes kind of trying to tidy it up as well, but it, uh, it, it came out well enough that it's kind of hard to tell how much better this one is. This car at one time had the nice uh, 
the headlight trim things around here. Uh, these are actually pretty rare as far as I can tell and they're I don't think they're reproduced but unfortunately this one has been in, uh, in involved in too many adventures and now it is junk. Uh, I think this one could be saved. Yeah, these are really cool. Uh, maybe one day I'll find a good pair. Uh, this car, uh, obviously suitable as a donor, very bad car. You can see that I, I tried, but the, the trouble is that this stuff is so delicate that as soon as you start pushing on it, it starts cracking and breaking and, and uh, there's just not really a good way to bring that back. It's too bad because a lot of it was okay, but this corner of it was so badly smashed. So this one, despite being not perfect, is a massive improvement. Uh, in the end, I probably won't use either of these because I have this one which uh, is I think somehow in excellent original condition and it even still has the little thing here these are always missing because they're just very delicate and uh, tend to get broken off over the years I actually have the uh, trim pieces to finish this grill out and somehow they are not on I think they're in the trunk of the car uh, that's the 61 Plymouth grill situation as it stands. 61 Plymouth stuff, pretty hard to get. Not a popular car, not a car that people fix up. I know there's a few of us out there right on. Um, you can see these are very hard to find. Uh, they're not the same as 1960. I wish that they were, but they are not. And you can see that, you know, in my youth I put pieces on with whatever screws I could find in the yard. Not the right screws. I actually managed to find and snarf a couple of the correct screws for these headlights while I was at the junkyard. All the trim pieces were long gone, but the screws were hanging out of the fenders, which were also long gone. So I've got, I think I need eight, but I have three correct screws now. So that's cool. We're getting there slowly. Uh, this is another car with a very decent uh, hood ornament there. Uh, yeah, overall, not too bad. Got good bumpers on this one. And, uh, you know, lots of good bits. Still got good emblems on it. And, uh, yeah, the, the emblems are, are quite hard to get. Uh, you know, trim and stuff. I've got decent, unfortunately, when I bought this car, I didn't do that. Somebody had screwed the molding on with a sheet metal screw but it's uh, Belvedere slash Fury only because it's wider here. The cheapo cars just had a single molding there so they don't have this top to it. So that's a little bit uh, harder to find. And uh, the car at the junkyard had a lovely trunk lid that somebody had taken a grinder to it and peeled it open. So, so much for that. I would have bought that. Um, Thanks guys, it was nice to wreck that. Another thing that is very hard to find for these 6061 Plymouths is the correct original speaker grill. And you can see there why they're so hard to find. They sit in the sun all day and turn to dust. So you can imagine how happy I was when I looked in the junkyard car and there was an excellent original speaker grill 1961. Uh, they are slightly different than the 1960, which uh, fits in the same hole, but has a slightly finer pattern to it. Uh, anyhow, 60 also suffers the same decomposition. Nevertheless, one more thing off of the list if I decide to build a 1961 Plymouth two-door hardtop. Until further notice. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out the video today. I know not particularly exciting, but I'm uh, really trying to put my effort into getting the Impala Biscayne spliced together and uh, got lots going on there. So obviously we'll be spending a lot of time on the Impala Biscayne uh, on the upcoming Saturday video, as well as uh, little uh, adventures with Steven and the Traction Avant and uh, a look at Laura's 1790s uh, cabin project which is actually underway so uh, 
Hope you guys are looking forward to it like I am. We're having a lot of fun on this Impala project. Oh, it's off the screen there, but... And of course, our buddy Dean is back, and uh, we'll be uh, getting together with him, of course, and the wonderful 1958 Edsel. Cheers, guys. See you soon. He's a regular ah, contributor. Same old shit. <laughs>